Good morning, church. It's great to have you join us here this morning on Facebook. It is hard to believe that it's been a week since we met together and did the drive-in service for Easter, and it was so good to see uh, some of your faces. I appreciated the waves, and it would have been nice to shake hands and give hugs, but um, thank you all for, for doing your part in, in staying with the social distancing and, and doing what we're supposed to do. We super appreciate that. It was great to see you, and we will uh, plan once the weather warms up a little bit, we'll make plans to do that on a more regular basis because it is good. Even if we can't be in super close proximity, it's better to be at least in the parking lot, in our cars, to see people and enjoy the waves and the smiles. This morning, um, we're starting a new series. It's called Neighborhood Watch. You may have seen something on social media, but uh, my plan was that we were going to, I was going to be out and about. I wasn't going to be in the church building this, this morning, but uh, with the wind the last few days and things like that, it's just been kind of hard to record outside without sounding like we're standing in a, in a, uh, a wind tunnel. So you're here this morning, but next week when you tune in, you may find us someplace else. You can guess where that's at. Um, if you recognize it, we'll have you jot that down in the comments below, but this morning, before we get started and we do anything else, I want you to hear the words of the psalmist in Psalms 139, 13, and this is from the NLT. It says, you made all of the delicate inner parts of my body, and you knit me together in my mother's womb. This morning, I want you to hear those words. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body, and you knit me together in my mother's womb. No one watching this morning, no one listening this morning is a mistake, is an accident. God loves each and every one of us. Each and every one of us have a purpose from him. He plans you. He, he made your innermost parts, the delicate Hearts, and then he puts you together in your mother's womb so this morning as i'm going to turn it over to uh to carrie nola and heather for worship here in a minute as we come back and we're going to look at god's word some more and exactly what it looks like to be a neighbor and why is it important to be a good neighbor I want you to think, let these words play in the back of your mind. No matter where you find yourself this morning, no matter what you have experienced this last week, you have value. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these words of the psalmist. God, so often it's so easy to listen to the enemy and he begins to speak into our ear and say that you have no value at all. You're a dumpster fire. You're a train wreck. You are, and he fills in the blank with whatever lie he can come up with to press us down, to keep us out. So this morning, Father, as we are gathered at a distance, no matter where people hear this this morning, I pray, God, that they will just hear the fact that they are not an accident. That they have value to the creator of the universe. That you took the time to put them together. To knit them together. To make those intricate, delicate parts and put them together. God, if they didn't have value, you wouldn't have taken your time to do that. So we thank you for this verse, and we pray that we will just take it to heart. We love you, Jesus, and we ask it in your name. Desperation, I turn to heaven. 
spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to where my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me.
that worship. Hope you guys enjoyed that at home. This morning as we go to prayer, uh, we just want to continue to pray for the Rath family as uh, Dr. Rath has passed and, and it was sudden and we just want to hold up Andrew and his family as uh, they're walking through this. Also, I, I just ask that you uh, I know I've talked to several of you this week and you, there's been um, hospital visits, hospital stays, um, some procedures done this week and We'll just pray for healing there, and also uh, we'll pray that, though I know there's a couple of uh, big appointments coming up this week, and so I will be praying that God is just working there, and no matter what the diagnosis, we're going to trust him with that. We're going to lean into him. Um, also, guys, I just want to encourage you now more than ever. Last week, we're, we're a week removed from Easter, and so I encourage you to be... Uh, just praying, asking, asking God to put people in front of you, to give them, give you the opportunity to share Jesus' love and hope that we talked about last week. Um, as this drags on, I think we're going to have more and more people who are questioning what's going on, and and so I encourage you to to step into those opportunities, those God-given providential opportunities. Let's pray. Father, this morning, God, we thank you that uh, we're able to at least come together through technology. God, it was great to worship you with my family last week. While some of them couldn't be here, <laughs> we filled the parking lot and went across the street with some, and we're excited for that. Father, I pray that we will just continue to be passionate followers of yours, but Jesus, in this time of of uncertainty, that we will just take the opportunity to share your love and your grace and your mercy. Jesus, that hope that we talked about last week, that we will <clears throat> have that um, in the front of our minds, that as we are having conversations with people who are maybe starting to feel uh, this quarantine and the pressure that is not going to work and the, and the change in schedule and all of those things, give us the boldness, Jesus, to step into the conversations that you give us opportunity to have. Help us to not shrink away from those, but to step in them, step into them um, with gusto, with love and hope. Jesus,
Jesus, that we have found personally that you have revealed to us. Father, we thank you that we've had some folks come through uh, situations this week, doctor, <laughs> doctor's appointments, procedures, things like that, and they're healing up. <laughs> and <clears throat> Father, I pray that you will just help them to continue to, to heal and to lean into you uh, as they're recovering. Father, I pray that you'll be with those who have uh, doctor's appointments or procedures this week, things that are coming up. Um, they're anticipating that. And God, we're just going to lean into you and we're going to trust you with the diagnosis that no matter what the doctors say, we're going to lean into you and trust you and know that it's part of, even through, if it's a, a scary diagnosis, a, a hard diagnosis, we're going to lean in and trust you because we know, God, that you can work through even awful, horrible diagnosis or horrible, awful situations and turn those things for good. So God, I pray that we will just uh, be able to see that. God, be with us as we read your word here in a moment. Open our hearts and our minds as we continue to worship you. That we will hear from you. But not only will we hear, but Jesus, that we will be changed by what we heard, by the call of action to action that you give us. We love you, Jesus, and we ask it in your name. Amen. Do you, uh, do you ever think about your value? And I, I'm not talking about your net worth here. I, I think probably there's some people who, uh, over the last few weeks, probably if you ask them what their net worth, they would probably know what it is because they've been watching their 401k or they've watched their stock account, their brokerage account just kind of crash. And, and so they're really starting to feel that. But that's not what we're talking about this morning. This morning we're talking about <clears throat> what is your value? That intrinsic value that, that each and every one of us have, the way that we're wired, the, the gifts that we've been given. Those things that God gave you and I to impact those around us. And sometimes we... I've had more conversations over the last uh, week or so with people who really are starting to question their value. They've either, because they've, their job is, is in question or maybe they don't feel they're, they're staying at home and trying to teach their kids and they just don't feel that, that they're quite up to that, that it's just not working out the way they want it to. Whatever it is, they're feeling this crunch. They're, they're wondering who... Who am I? What value do I really have? Um, sometimes our jobs are that way. We, we get tied into our job and, and we begin to see our worth and our value in, in what we do. Maybe sometimes we do that as parents. Um, we push our kids academically or, or through sports because we want to live vicariously through them or we want our value somehow is, is tied to their success. But this morning, I just want you to go back to the, to the verse that we read early, earlier, Psalms 139. And I want you to think about that again. I want you to think about the fact that God, there's each and every one of us, God made intentionally. That he has a purpose, that there was none of us, again, that were accidents. I, I, I hear that word sometimes. And sometimes... <clears throat> We need to hear that. We need to remember that. Some of us, we need to hear it a lot. We need to take it to heart. But I also realize that, that it's easier for me to value people who are like me, people who look like me, people who like the same things, maybe uh, the people that worship the same. My God, the one true God, it's easier for me to value them than people who are different than me. That's tough because it's so easy for us to take people who we disagree with politically or religiously or we disagree with their lifestyle and somehow because we disagree with them, we see them as lesser value. But when we look at Psalms 139.13, 
I don't think that's what God's plan was. I've got a couple more scriptures this morning that I want us to look at. And they're both in the beginning of the Bible. Turn to Genesis chapter 1. Starting in verse 26. Genesis 1.26 says, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. And then go down to chapter 2, just down a little ways in verse 7. It says, then, God, then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Father, we thank you for these words. God, speak to our hearts this morning deal with us with the value the way we value ourselves and the way we value others we love you Jesus and we ask it in your name amen so in verse 26 27 and 28 we hear God say, I'm going to make them in our image. Let us make them in our image. And as a kid growing up, what I thought that meant was, as a, a, going to Sunday school, I thought, oh my goodness, God, uh, somehow there's <clears throat> part of me, but I looked around the room and I I see that there was short people and tall people and fat people and skinny people and people with red hair and people with blonde hair and people with brown hair. And I was like, this just gets really confusing. But as I've gotten older, I believe, I don't claim to have everything figured out, but I think I understand this a little bit more. What God was doing here was saying, we're going to make them, let us make them in our image. God saying, I have something special for them. I have a plan that is different from the rest of my creation. The rest of the creation that I just spoke, and it happened. I'm going to give them dominion over it. They're going to rule over it. They are set aside. They are different. And sometimes we may struggle to see the fact that God has set us apart and made us different. Sometimes we don't have any problems seeing that in ourselves, but boy, we struggle seeing that in other people. Right? You turn on the television, and, and I don't care if you're a, an elephant or a donkey, a red or a blue, on a daily basis, you can find someone that you disagree with vehemently. And in doing so, we begin to devalue those people. Even though God says, I made humanity different than the rest of my creation. We have begin to buy into this lie of secular humanism that the fact that we're just some very advanced primate. Some of us more advanced than others. See, as Jesus followers go, oh, no, no, we, 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 we don't do that. We, we believe that God 
has value of life. We, we believe babies are valuable. We don't want to see abortion happen, right? And, and I agree with that. But how often have we looked at someone and devalued them because of the choices that they're making, the lifestyle that they're, they're making, choice they're making, right? People that we see making those choices and we begin to think that somehow we have greater value than them because obviously God loves us more because we're not doing that. We're not living that lifestyle. We're not making those choices. I'm a much better parent. I'm a much better grandparent than they are. I'm a much better neighbor. Let's see, as I read chapter 1 verses 26, 27, and 28 I, I, I don't see it where God says I'm going to make some of them special and the others not so much God values all of humanity he made us unique right that's what it says in, in verse 7 of chapter 2 it says that the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils and the man became a living person. Right? He didn't just, God could have spoke and it could have happened. But God took the time to take the dust and form it. He took the time to breathe life into the nostrils of the man. See, we as human beings are created uniquely and on purpose. A verse that, uh, that I keep coming back to over and over, probably for the last year and a half, and <laughs> if you're in church very often, you, you hear me say this. I make reference to it on a regular basis. The Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to Ephesus, in chapter 2, verse 10, it says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the things he planned for us long ago. Did you hear that this morning? No one listening is an accident. No one listening is a mistake to God. We were created. He made the intricate parts and knit us together in Psalms 139 to be a masterpiece. do the things that he planned for us way back then. So this morning, that leaves us in, in a couple, with a couple of questions. Maybe you've been struggling with your own value recently. Maybe you've struggled with your own value your entire life. Maybe you came from a, a family that maybe wasn't the greatest. And you never felt valued or loved. I'm here to tell you this morning, no matter how many times you may have been told that you were a mistake, you are not a mistake in God's eyes. How about those of us who are Jesus followers? And yet 
we determine other people's value because of their actions or their lifestyle or their political bent. I'm guilty of this, guys. I, I'm not I'm not yelling at you. We love to hear, some of us love to hear this fact that we're we're unique, that we're set apart. But we don't really take that all the way out. That God created even that person who is making those horrible choices or you disagree with vehemently. See, we need to see God, our value to God that we were made uniquely, that we were made with a purpose. But we also need to see that maybe their life doesn't show it. Maybe they've rejected it. But God <clears throat> has made those people and they have value to him as well. So as we begin to tear them down, we're tearing down something of value to God. So for, for us to truly recognize God's the God-given potential that we have. We won't ever do that until we recognize our own value to God and we begin to value people, others, the way he does. So I encourage you this week as the news comes on as the neighbor does whatever they do. Maybe it's as you get up in the morning and you look in the mirror and you question your own value. My challenge for you this week is to allow God to begin to pull those scales off of your eyes. Begin to see the value that you have to him. Begin to see the value that he has in them. So that we can be his church. So that we can be his hands and his feet. like we've been called to be. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these words. We thank you as we read in the very beginning as you formed man. You made him with a purpose. You made him unique. You've made us. You've set us apart. Father, we thank you for the words of the Apostle Paul. That we are your masterpiece made new in your son, Jesus Christ. To fulfill the plan that you had for us long ago. So Jesus, this morning, if we are struggling with valuing ourselves... seeing what value we might have to you. Help us to take those words to heart. 
But Father, I also pray that as we start our Monday tomorrow or our Sunday today, Yeah, those people that we disagree with. Those people that just, man, they're a burr under our saddle. Help us to recognize that while we don't agree with what they're saying or what they're doing, Father, help us to realize that they have value to you. you have a plan for them that you have a plan for us and then maybe instead of tearing them down and ripping them apart that we might just lift them up in prayer that we might lift them up that God you might just work a mighty miracle in their life. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you that we can have hope that there is more than this. That as we celebrated last week, that we have the hope that Jesus, you won, you defeated sin and death. We love you. We ask it in your name. Amen.